Hi, Flimsy Lunch Tray here with a, another uh, video for you today as we look at part three in how to map on Sleeping Giant. So today in part three, we're going to be talking about battleships. So we're going to be talking about uh, some typical battleship positioning um, and also how, how do battleships interact uh, with the other classes. But then also, um, you know, different strategies and things you can use to your advantage uh, when it comes to the map Sleeping Giant. Uh, so for the picture, uh, this is a ranked example. Know that also there are times, uh, you see, you know, for example, if you're in a, uh, a random battle, um, then you might have, you know, three circles kind of like that, roughly, as I'm no uh, artist when it comes to drawing. But you have something of that, so just keep that in mind, but know that um, what I shared tends to usually uh, work uh, regardless of maybe where cap placement is. So, battleships. So there's a few uh, different uh, types of battleships too we have to talk about. Um, you have certain battleships that um, for this map, um, you have tier eight through tier 10. So naturally there's gonna be some zones of where uh, the sniper type battleships work best. Um, and then you know more of your, maybe kind of hybrid to the more of your brawling battleships uh, where they can uh, function best uh, when it comes to this map. So, battleships. Let's talk about positioning. So, um, there are not only just in ranked, but typically battleships, you know, there's kind of like three battle groups um, that you may have um, in spawning, or maybe it's just two. I can't recall on Sleeping Giant when it comes to randoms per se. But we're going to look at uh, the green team first. Um, traditionally, when the battle starts, um, it is best for battleships to move out of spawn and getting closer um, to the action. Um, and let's say there's a couple of battleships here, right? So let's say maybe a battleship that's a little bit more uh, handled better for um, brawling purposes with secondaries. You know, maybe I'm looking at a German or an American battleship. Uh, known for brawling capabilities. Um, traditionally, you go maybe a little bit more along these lines, where you go more towards where the action is going to be happening. We'll look at this flank, then we'll look at the other flank. If you're something maybe more, let's say, like a Yamato, Musashi, uh, then usually it's better to come. That's, that's not what I want to do. Um, to kind of work along and uh, maybe this zone over here. Um, so we'll just say, yeah, let's, let's just say it like this. Uh, so your first positioning as a battleship, um, it's really, it's honestly just going to be this area. Uh, let's just make it kind of like that. Um, you also have, you know, this because of how the map changes, uh, it can begin to look uh, different depending on what you see is happening. So let's just say these are um, the one positions for a battleship. Um, when you're looking at this uh, early in the game, uh, there are battleships, you know, players like to position themselves differently. So as you know, you have battleship, kind of like what I was drawing. Um, you know, you're coming, maybe you're more brawling, you're hooking in here. Um, maybe you're a bit more of a sniper, so you kind of work the edge a bit more. Um, and then really this way only has one path to go if you want to break off more further. Uh, for example, you could go maybe more in this general vicinity until you see uh, what is happening uh, with the enemy team and how they're pushing down. Especially since, you know, battleships don't just spawn in this exact location. It's, it's across the board. Um, so you're moving up, utilizing the flank that you are on. Um, again, traditionally in the more forward positions, it's better to have more of the brawling type battleships. Um, and I, I guess I'm kind of leaving out the Russian BBs, but they can tank damage really good. Well, maybe a more sniper type battleship uh, goes more towards um, the flanks um, to get some more shots in on uh, enemy ships. You also have this position here in the center. 
Uh, I've seen, there's a couple low parts in the island, I think. Uh, you have one here, you have another section here. Um, where, you know, say you have a bold cruiser or battleship going across um, here in the center. Uh, you can punish for them for that. But the challenge of this positioning is if there is no um, enemy cruisers, battleships for you to detect um, in this general area, then you're basically, you're, you're kind of wasting your time unless you're able to get a shot down these avenues. So I, if I do see anything here, it tends to be more cruisers, uh, maybe trying to utilize this position. But it's a good uh, position, especially if, for example, like your flank collapses and the enemy team's pushing along, you're in a battleship over here, then you might be able to get some good uh, side shots um, as you move across. Um, and then really this map, it really depends on what's happening on the flank and how you move from these first positions. Um, because this map, it's it's really special in its own way because the map, it doesn't mirror each other. It's it's completely different. You have um, the area over here where, like, you know, this is cruiser camping ground. Um, and then you have this where it's a bit more open unless you're inside the island, uh, inside this cap, uh, as an example. So it's really... Um, you really have to have map awareness, um, situational awareness, like in any map, but particularly for Sleeping Giant, so you can understand how the enemy team's moving and how that dictates how you move out of these first positions. Because once the the enemy team shows uh, signs of weakness um, on the flank, if your team is on board with it, then you can push up and begin to apply pressure. Um, so you have this, this first positioning. Um, at the same time, I would say from here... Um, you know, another position, you know, if your things are working out well, then I begin to see more of this area being uh, position number two. And actually the enemy team, uh, the red team is actually gonna share uh, in that today. Because for them, um, you know, have this traditional, you got, you got this area. You've got this area. It's kind of mirroring each other's from a north-south direction, but not an east-west uh, direction. Uh, do we did last time? And then you might have a battleship that kind of breaks farther off uh, this way. Oh yeah, and then so um, position one. Oh, now we're two over here. So this is really the starting out point. You have to be careful when you're moving up as a battleship um, on both flanks, because if there is a destroyer on the team that gets close enough and spots you, uh, the battleships are always going to light up what they first see in the back. Um, and that, that's really the same on either side. I'm a cruiser and I'm camping along these edges. I see a battleship, you know, coming broadside or even a cruiser. You know, I'm going to take those shots. So you have to be conscious of your positioning and how you're moving up, angling in. Uh, so you're you're more angled in versus broadside uh, when the enemy team uh, first appears. So you have this action going on with battleships, and then it's kind of back and forth until usually the destroyers. Um, will be the deciding factor on if a flank succeeds or falters. And then we're going to say that, <laughs> as interesting as it may appear, this on for this flank can be really it's the second position, uh, if we're being honest, as I draw a terrible two. Um, because usually what happens is once uh, this the enemy team or... Um, a red team, green team, whoever it tends to win this, uh, usually battleships, they, they kind of feel uncomfortable being out here. Uh, so then they move in. Um, they want to get more out of cover uh, or get more into cover. Um, and that can pose a couple issues because once you're in here, there's only two ways out. And the enemy team um, can take that to their advantage. Um, so really you have this dilemma happening here with Sleeping Giants. Um, 
where the real estate for battleships tends to be uh, more waiting in the back until a flank uh, breaks free uh, for whether you're on uh, your team, uh, green team, red team, and then pushing up and applying pressure. So really um, here, if this flank is one, uh, it's really great as a battleship player uh, because let's say if you still have enemy team players over here, you can use this as uh, a defensive line. You can you get to use these islands to your advantage because if the enemy team wants to push in from this direction, you have all these avenues, uh, shots, different angles, um, places you can pop out and punishing them. Um, I've seen a lot of enemy team, you know, once uh, the flank wins, uh, team wins this flank, uh, enemy team uh, is like, oh my gosh, we've got to go over and help. They're out here in the open. And then you're able to punish them. And that's when these uh, center one positions can come more in handy. Um, if you see that, you know, maybe you're a sniping battleship, you're back over here, your team has won the flank, and then you just move up this direction. Um, you don't follow your team up the flank, but you support cover from the rear because you're putting in a crossfire versus being in just one little batch uh, moving along. And that doesn't really help your team if you're not able to set up crossfires um, as a battleship on this match. So using these islands as a, for defensive purposes is really good, especially this island here. Um, there's uh, several low spots uh, on it. It's not a super high island. I think there's even this like lower part over here. Uh, we use as even a cruiser, but battleships we're talking about can get over here and utilize this position um, and putting some effective fire uh, on the enemy team. And you can even have some that go around this way because this island jets out a little farther. Uh, I'll see battleships kind of uh, do some island hopping um, and utilize this, which w works well if you have destroyers screening for you um, and per uh, securing the flank. Um, it becomes dangerous when battleships, uh, as you begin to push, if the destroyers are um, not uh, are unchecked, enemy destroyers on your flank are unchecked. So let's just talk about how battleships interact with the other classes on this map. Um, so uh, first and how they interact with aircraft carriers. Um, you have, um, you know, traditionally the aircraft carriers are just going to be sitting uh, more in this backfield area on either side. And there's not really much you can do until maybe a flank is one. And then all of a sudden the aircraft carrier is still sitting in spawn, he didn't leave then you're able to deal with him. Um, but there's not a ton in terms of how you can deal with how easily aircraft carriers can set up uh, crossfires in a matter, matter of seconds, right? So you have to be mindful of that, especially if there's dive bombers and um, they can come over um, these different islands uh, really easily and catch you off guard. And that's what makes it really hard, particularly with this map when there are aircraft carriers. Um, because they can really provide a lot of spotting and information intel uh, for their team. So when you're working in more of these uh, positions, you tend to have, you know, maybe these cruisers, destroyers between you and the aircraft carrier. So they can take some heat in coming in unless, you know, the cruisers are hiding behind the battleships, uh, so on and so forth. So you just have to realize what type of position you're in and um, if there is a squadron of torpedo bombers, dive bombers, rocket planes coming in. Um, because basically, as a battleship in this match, you are going to take damage from aircraft carrier um, if he is uh, aware of your presence, especially if you're isolated out alone on the flank. Um, I see a lot of uh, battleship players who, they're all for it, they're gonna go, and they're gonna push their team with, uh, push with or without their team. They're isolated, and then aircraft carrier um, focuses you down, because that's, really the strength of an aircraft carrier is when there's a, uh, a ship in the battle um, that's isolated, it's alone by himself. Um, the CV is going to take, uh, the planes are going to take less AA damage uh, when you're, when they can focus on a target that's all by themselves, um, all by the lonesomes. So you just have to be mindful that, of that because you are a battleship, you are one of the, um, you have the poorest concealment um, in the game, as it were. Um, so if you start pushing up on the flanks and aircraft carrier spots that and you're by yourself, um, then they're going to start lighting you up um, if the aircraft carrier player is paying attention. Uh, in terms of also dealing with battleships, you know, we've, we've talked about the positions 
Um, it's important that you stay angled in when you're dealing with these avenues, um, bow in, angled in. Um, I see far too many players um, who get greedy and they show too much side, too much broadside. And because they just wanted to get their weird turret um, firing, um, they end up dying or um, just making a mistake. So you really, you have to hold your position until one of the flanks uh, breaks and then that's able for you to decide. Because even with this uh, cap here, it's not your job as a battleship to just rush in and secure this. Um, that lies with the destroyers and then secondly, the cruisers. Um, you're here on this flank as backup for your team. Um, so if you know your destroyer is really fast, he gets in before, let's say the other destroyer, um, that is going to, you're just gonna back them up, support them. Maybe you keep an enemy destroyer, cruiser, battleship from following in behind your teammate. Um, so you have to be mindful of that. At the same time, um, yeah, we'll talk about more about destroyers in a minute. Um, so you're just really trying to apply pressure. And so as the positioning occurs on this map, you just have to be have the map awareness to see where the enemy team is going, where's your team going and playing off of that. Um, because every minute the battle changes um, on Sleeping Giant typically, unless you're kind of in a deadlock. In terms of cruisers, uh, as I said, this is cruiser campground here for this flank. So when you are a battleship and you get more out here on the edge, uh, you uh, tend to be able to put more of a firing solution on the cruisers who may be hugging uh, along the island. Two, um, especially this place also tends to be a good spot for cruisers, you know, something like the Wooster. Um, to sit here and be uh, spamming f fire uh, in this direction. So if you get a little bit more out, you know, usually it tends to be more your destroyers, but you might uh, spot and light them up and easily get a broadside uh, citadel in on them. Um, and typically, you know, I also see cruisers that are, they're kind of out in these areas, right? They're not sticking to either island and around the open. And then also you as a battleship player um, can punish them for that. Um, so, you know, once I was in, I think it was a Buffalo working along this flank and there is an Azumo, all three turrets in the front, uh, and was able to, you know, apply pressure to me rather well in this position. So, you know, having to back up, uh, where I'm taking away his firing solution on me and just trying to focus on any destroyers or cruisers, um, that might be moving around in these areas. Um, at the same time too, uh, again, it's risky for cruisers to be out here in the center. Um, but they can and will sometimes take advantage of that, especially cruisers with good concealment. Um, you know, something maybe like the, the Neptune, the Minotaur, um, or just, just cruisers in general, the tier 8 to tier 10 that have good concealment. They might try to play off this area because if they get set up and, you know, for example, have a smoke, um, you know, even something like uh, the Smolensk, um, they can ap apply pressure on an enemy team uh, that's pushing along here um, and spamming shells and uh, over uh, and through these channels, but also through these islands because these two are rather low. So it's uh, a good playing field for them to take advantage of. So you have to be mindful of that. At the same time, uh, over here on this flank, um, as you push up, uh, the number one goal as a battleship player, I would say, when you're moving up on this side of the map is one you're wanting to back up support your destroyers of course that are moving up here but it's also it's applying damage to the first ship you see um so let's say the destroyer doesn't get detected but you're in a battleship you're ready to go and all of a sudden a cruiser appears usually you can have that advantage of oh they get detected by let's say your friendly uh, destroyer and instantly being able to uh, punish them. Because if you as a battleship are punishing them um, as they show themselves, it gives your destroyers and cruisers a better chance of getting uh, in through uh, the island. So um, their thought process uh, may be hindered uh, because of that pressure you're applying and supporting uh, here. And then you see the traditional mistake that cruisers make, like, oh my gosh, I'm under attack. And then they do this broadside maneuver and then to fall back and then that's where you can punish and just kill them uh, really easily uh, versus what a cruiser should do. And that is just reverse um, and back up um, to get the pressure off of them. Um, in terms of destroyers, um, destroyers are just sneaky. 
uh, honestly when it comes to Sleeping Giant because um, you have this whole chain of islands here. You know, there can be a destroyer that leaves spawn, works all the way along here, get into the cap without even being noticed um, because there's no ships maybe positioned here or you guys are all, uh, your teams just moved up, right? So a destroyer can really use this to their advantage uh, when surprising. I've seen plenty of destroyers come along around here, uh, drop in, dump a bunch of torpedoes on a battleship or cruiser that's still sitting here. Especially after, let's say, uh, the destroyers, they are able to take this cap. Your team, for example, is not doing well. And they get, or it's non-existent anymore. And then they make a break, um, come down along here, and then they just are able to uh, punish um, battleships um, in this area that are maybe not paying attention to tunnel vision on what's happening uh, on the northern end of the map. Um, so you just have to be mindful checking out the your mini map every now and then seeing okay that destroyer okay he's there and then oh it's been two minutes since he's been detected so he could be moved you know pretty far from that original location so having that uh, map awareness of knowing where enemy destroyers are is really important on this map especially if you're a battleship and you move into this position uh, you take this cap uh, because it's so easy for uh, a destroyer to just yellow in right they're they're undetected you're sitting here maybe you're applying some pressure over on this way and when sure comes down rushes in or even rushes in behind um, using this island as concealment you know and then just dumping a bunch of torpedoes into you so you really have to be mindful of that because also in the early game destroyers like to some like to just make a beeline right into the cap so you may think oh like there's nothing going on i'm going to go into the cap and all of a sudden as soon as you cap enemy shore enters the cap from the other side. Um, so you just have to be mindful of that because destroyers like to yellow on this map. Um, I see it often a lot because uh, they get to, they like to utilize these these islands and these islands. Um, you know, they're not gonna, a destroyer's not gonna yellow rush you uh, just out in the open uh, along the flanks. So you have to be mindful of that. And rarely do I see it, but sometimes I see destroyers taking advantage of this island. So let's say you're moving up, you know, and then they kind of make a break. Uh, they come out here and uh, torpedo rush you. So that's really why it's valuable in this map to keep your destroyers and cruisers alive. Um, because destroyers can have such advantage with concealment and using all these islands to be able to maneuver, get around and catch you off guard. Um, so you just have to be aware of what's happening um, in the battle. So keep checking your mini map, see what's going on in between your salvos. You know, you've got, you know, roughly, you know, 20 to over 30 seconds. Um, so just, you know, take a few seconds, look at your mini map, see what the enemy team's doing, see what your team's doing, um, and then go from there. Um, so that will really help give you an, an edge in terms of understanding what's happening on this map, because this map it's almost like a live symbiote. It just constantly changes. It constantly evolves as the battle progresses to what your team is doing, but also what the enemy team is doing. Uh, because there's this breaking point, particularly on Sleeping Giant. If your team wins this flank, that puts the enemy team um, at a disadvantage over here because you get to use these islands for camping. So you have that going on. Um, or if your team loses this flank, enemy team pushes in around, then that con that has already puts you in a different mindset of, oh, we're losing map control. And usually that means you've lost the game. Uh, this link is really important. If you do like a, you know, for the ranked, if your team decides to all do a BC push, you have to commit to it. Because if you just lollygag and get set up here and you get bogged down, enemy team caps and they move in. So you have this small, like, eh, let's say a four minute window. Your team has a four minute window to apply pressure and push up and effectively deal damage in taking out the enemy team uh, before uh, the enemy team finishes with this cap, cruisers move in and they get your broadsides because you're not paying attention as you push up. So you have this uh, window that you have to work with um, when it comes to a, a BC push. So you just have to be mindful of that and trying to overwhelm the enemy team if your whole team decides to push uh, a flank, um, because it's it's too risky. You're going to lose the game within you know five six minutes if your team just 
Pusitan Park and they draw the line where like we're not going any further than here. Enemy team comes down and then they can start uh, putting effective fire on you or destroyer sneaks up and takes your takes the cap uh, dumps torpedo because what you have to be mindful of with this map is uh, two oh as I erase too many things um, is if your team wins the the BC push flank you also that if that's the first goal is committing to it the second goal is covering your rear because the enemy team sees that you're doing a BC push and then all they do is they just sneak around in behind you um, or and then they just uh, devastate you so then they're like chasing you and then now you're uh, at a disadvantage because there's been plenty of times where I've our teams won the flank um, and no matter what type of ship I'm in if I don't see our rears being covered I'll turn around cover the rear I've caught plenty of destroyers and cruisers off guard who think that our team's pushed up here but uh, and we're all up here now surprise I'm here and I just citadel and killed you because <laughs> you come around the side of the island broadside so when uh, it comes to battleships, just again, can't emphasize it enough, especially for Sleeping Giant, is just have map awareness, have situational awareness of how you're positioning your ship and what enemy ships could potentially have a broadside fire uh, solution on you or those pesky destroyers who get to use uh, a lot of these islands uh, to their advantage in sneaking up on you and potentially uh, yellowing you with a bunch of torpedoes. So I think that's really going to sum up uh, my conversation uh, with sleeping giant uh, again you know as we've discussed you know know where there's uh, dips in the islands uh, to be able to put effective fire in uh, as a battleship and dealing team damage to the enemy team so if you like today's video give it a thumbs up if you didn't give it a thumbs down subscribe if you want to see more and if you already subscribed thanks so much really appreciate it so until next time take care